What's up enthusiasts? A few weeks ago we took a look at how I film the Nerf Wars I go to, so this week we're taking that to the next step, which is how I edit my Nerf War videos for YouTube. Starting off, we've got to open up our editing program. I personally use Adobe Premiere Pro. In the past, I've also used Sony Vegas, which I think is very beginner friendly. However, both of these programs are rather expensive, so you can also look into HitFilm Express as a free option that's very capable. With our program open, we need to create a new project, name it what you like, then when selecting the settings, make sure it's set to 1920 by 1080 for the frame size, and the frame rate is 29.97 for 30 FPS, or 50 59.94 for 60 FPS. Keep the pixel aspect ratio at square pixels and the audio sample rate at 48,000. Once we've got the settings set, we need to drag the footage we have into the timeline and start scrubbing through it for the parts we want. I generally change the layout of the program so the preview is as large as I can get it. That way I can more easily see what's going on to decide what's worth including and what isn't. When I'm going through and doing the initial cut, I generally don't worry too much about finding the exact spots to cut. This is because after we get it cut down the first time, we're going to go back a second time and refine those cuts, removing even more to get the end result the way we want it. Once we're happy with the length and content, it's time to start adding the overlay. The overlay itself is in three parts, the left part, the right part, and the top part. I did this because the left and right sides of the overlay are going to be adjusted with a basic 3D effect to give them a look slightly similar to how it might be angled inside of a helmet, like in a video game. Each of these assets needs to be adjusted in Photoshop to properly show the player name along with the blaster and ammo type for each video. Once the overlay is in place, I'll bring in the other assets like the enemy tagged and reloading images. In the past, these were video files that I'd made in After Effects, but since I still haven't set these in stone just yet for the new overlay, I just set the opacity keyframes to be in and out where I want them and copy as needed. Now begins the task of going through the video for all the tags, reloads, and times the player was tagged, and placing the appropriate images in place for them. I'll spend a lot of time during this step double checking tags by going frame by frame to try and track darts actually tagging the enemy players. Now that that's all done, we can mess with the image settings for the video itself. Now because this is gameplay footage and not a feature film, I don't go crazy overboard with the effects here, mostly because the more you do, the longer it takes to render an export, preventing me from working on other things. Generally, I mess with the levels a bit. What this does can be compared to wiping dirt off of a window. It takes a layer of grime off to make the image look cleaner. After that, I'll apply an unsharp mask, which helps the image look a little more crisp, and follow it with some slight color balancing. The image from my GoPro comes out a little more red than I'd like, so I lower the red slightly and bring up the blue a little. Next up, we can add the intro and outro files. To do that, we need to get the image of Kyle ready by editing the background out so we can put him onto the background we have. The third part of the intro is the image of the map overlay, which I'll apply the basic 3D effect and set a keyframe at the beginning and the end of the clip with different swivel and tilt settings to simulate mild movement. This prevents the footage from looking completely static during the intro. The last part of the intro is the flame logo animation I have to transition from the intro talk part to the footage itself. And on that, I do a fade in and a fade out of a half a second on each end by using keyframes on the opacity settings. Jumping over to the outro, I have three layers here. One is the background of my ending that has the crenellations that are moving. Above that, I bring in footage from a previous video, and above that is an end card with information on it. And I'll size the footage to fit in the box in the upper left-hand corner. After that, I'll move the three layers half a second in on top of the gameplay footage and use the opacity keyframes again to fade the outro in. With that, the video editing is essentially done, so we can now render the video as it is, which will take a while, so we'll use this time to write our script. When it comes to writing my scripts for videos, I personally like to bring up long-form content on YouTube that I can listen to while I'm writing. I find long-form content works best because if I'm constantly clicking new videos, I can easily get lost watching stuff and accomplish nothing. But with longer-form content, I can keep writing without needing to change videos often while still being entertained when I'm writing. 
Once the script is done, it's time to record the audio lines themselves. To do this, I'll use my Tascam DR100 audio recorder, but you can use whatever recording device you have. Just try to record in as quiet of a place as you can to prevent background noise from appearing in your clips. I like to record the script in separate parts so I can easily edit down each portion without having to search through one long file for each segment I want to use. Now that we have the audio recorded, we can bring that into our editing software and cut down each audio clip to the length we need and move them to the spots we want them in the video. Some of these clips are referencing specific things, so they're in specific places. Others are just spaced out a certain amount to prevent too much time without commentary. Once all the clips are in good places, it's time to lower the gameplay audio in the places we have commentary to prevent the two from clashing with each other. So we lower the gameplay audio enough that it's not fighting with the commentary, but not so much it's it's completely silent. I like to fade these volume changes in over several frames using keyframes on the audio channels just to prevent the jumps in volume from being too jarring. With that done, we can trim the intro and outro to fit the audio length and then give the entire video a watch to make sure it's all the way we want it to be. And once we've done that, we can export the video itself. For your export settings, I go with the H.264 codec, 1920x1080, 59.94 frames per second. Remember, this one will vary depending on what frame rate you record it at. For the bitrate settings, I go with a variable bitrate 2-pass setting, a target bitrate of 12 Mbps, and a maximum bitrate of 15 Mbps. For audio settings, I use the AAC codec and a bitrate of 320 Kbps. You can also choose where to save the file after the export and what to name it. If you'd like, you can see all the settings as I have them scrolling on the screen as well. Once you have everything set, you can queue the video export and the Adobe Media Encoder program will pop up, allowing you to export your video without leaving Premiere Pro open and taking up resources. If you're using a different program, you'll likely be exporting in the program itself. Regardless, the render will likely take several hours and take up enough of the resources on your computer from doing anything like gaming or editing. So I do my exports overnight, but that may not work for you, so plan accordingly and after the export, check the final product to make sure it's what you wanted and you're good to go. That does it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this look at how I edit Nerf War videos, and I really would love to see more gameplay videos showing up on YouTube. It's just such a great way to spread the fun of this hobby and get more people interested. I also want to say this is just the way that I edit videos. It's by no means the only way or the best way. It's just how I do it, and I wanted to share that with all of you. And you can expect to see the video being edited today on the channel next Saturday, so look forward to that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have fun flinging foam, and I'll see you next time.